चितवन को लोकप्रिय आवाज टेलीजन स्थानीय कार्यक्रम छायांकन तथा प्रसारण को समझनहोस् संपर्क फोन शून्य छप्पन्न पांच बाईस तीन सौ उनपचास मोबाइल अंठानब्बे पांच पचास छप्पन्न शून्य उनचालीस स्थानीय कार्यक्रम पर्यावरणीय कार्यक्रम सांस्कृतिक कार्यक्रम धार्मिक कार्यक्रम जस्ता अन्य कार्यक्रम को आवाज टेलीजन समझनहोस् संपर्क को लगी आवाज टेलीजन फोन शून्य छप्पन्न पांच बाईस तीन सौ उनपचास मोबाइल अंठानब्बे पांच पचास छप्पन्न शून्य उनचालीस
योजना अंतर्गत आने इच्छुक होना प्रणय राजनीतिक पार्टी का नेता आम सकून मैं ख्याल करते क्रमश नाम बढ़ा चाहूँ अतिथिजी को रखना पैला फ्रंटलाइन में आएगा आसन ग्रहण कर दिन भाग मज इस कार्यक्रम के प्रमुख अतिथि तीर्थता पशुपति विवास मंत्रालय के सचिव डाक्टर इमो दौजी सीजी लाभ करी विशिष्ट अतिथि को रूप में पाल भैया प्राध्यापक डाक्टर देवराज अधिकारी जी सदस्य सचिव विश्वविद्यालय अनुदान आयोग में अनुरोध कर Special guest Professor Jeevala from the University of Florida. Uh, Registrar of the University, Deans, Directors, Chief District Officer of the Chitwan Districts, uh, Representatives from different political parties, uh, Resource Persons, Former Vice Chancellor, 
of Mamar Ambassador, Mamar Chair of the University Grand Commission, all the faculties, staff, student of Agriculture and University University, media friends, ladies and gentlemen. It is my honor to welcome the chief guest, Dr. Yuvan Dabji Singh, who is the Secretary of Ministry of Agriculture and Livestock Development, the special guest member secretary from UGC, Professor Jibala from University of Florida, our chief district officers, and all the district guest guests in the DAS and colleagues from the University of Florida and Washington DC. This is a good platform for sharing knowledge and experience in agriculture and forestry education policies. Major objective of this workshop is to design agriculture and forestry education policy so that a concrete document in this line would be, would be produced. We are fortunate to have the presence of professors and experts on capacity building and land grant model from the University of Florida, who has attended this meeting. Fighting hunger is the global mission, and Zero Hunger 2030 is the sustainable development goal, which requires a strong determination and commitment from each nation. UN second sustainable development goal targets the end of malnutrition 2030. To meet this target, we need different approaches to assess nutrient sufficiency. Nearly 795 million people <coughs> globally are undernourished or malnourished, and South Asia is the second most undernourished and food insecure region in the world. Formulating policies which supports agricultural education and investment on research, providing subsidies and incentives to the farmers, promoting child and health, women health care, prioritizing nutrition program, increasing production and consumption of climate resilient native nutritional crops will create zero hunger by 2030. The average income of the Nepalese people is expected to rise to US dollar 1000 in the current fiscal year. The growth in Nepal's per capita income is also because of the growth of population of the goods and services. The quality of education for citizens in the country has a large effect on gross domestic product, GDP, which affects the income per capita. Highly educated populations contribute more to their economy driving GDP and increasing income per capita. USAID under the US government's Feed the Future initiatives worked with the government of Nepal and local development partners to increase agricultural productivity, facilitate, facilitate access to market, and improve nutrition by enhancing both production and consumption of more nutritious foods. Over the past five years, the Feed the Future initiative has helped an estimated 1 million Nepalis increase their incomes through improved agricultural productivity and enhanced nutrition. As a result, poverty dropped by 36% between 2013 and 2015. Starting decrease from 49% to 36% from 2006 to 2016. And average farmers' sales increased from $250 per year to an estimated dollar seven hundred per year in 24 southwestern and central districts where these programs were operated. At this moment, there are three universities producing agricultural manpower, and two universities are producing forestry manpower in this country. Nearly 600 agricultural graduates, 150 veterinary graduates, and 300 forestry graduates are produced every year, which is only 0.95% of the total graduates produced annually in this country. Among the total agricultural graduates, nearly 30% of them goes to abroad for higher studies or for the attractive employment opportunities. 
Agriculture and forestry education have various issues such as inadequate funding, poor infrastructure, shortage of trained human resources, lack of relevant curriculum for the field conditions, etc. Continual updating of the curriculum is needed and it should be revised to meet the need, national needs and challenges of agricultural activities in diverse geographical and agroecological regions throughout the country. Agriculture and Forestry University is associated with universities abroad, building new knowledge, discovery, and innovation. This is possible by academic, research collaboration, technology clusters, and the relationship between universities and the research organizations. We are responsible for producing quality graduates for Agriculture Ministry, NAC, NGOs, INGOs, universities, trade school, agriculture development bank, private industries, firms, etc. So agriculture graduates can also manage agricultural business or enterprises and in the areas of agricultural sales, food production, farming, etc. So one of the challenges we face today are limited budget in the research and innovation. Budget allocated on research by Nepal government is only 0.38% of the total budget of the country. However, it has not been defined how much percentage of the budget is allocated on agriculture, veterinary and forestry research. There is also a need to allocate fund, more funding towards the agricultural institutions so that they can start this good laboratory and research facilities for the students and faculties. Nepal government must allocate enough fund for agriculture, veterinary and forestry research to meet the expected outcome from these sectors. So before concluding, I want to thank the chief guest, Dr. Ibak Dojisi, special guest, Professor Dr. Devraj Adhikari, uh, member secretary of UGC, Professor Ji Bolan, and all the distinguished guests uh, in the dash. I am extremely thankful to the paper presenters who have accepted to present the policy paper on agriculture and forestry education and the commentators for their valuable thoughts and comments. I'd like to thank the organizing committee, Chair Professor Navaraj Devgoda and the team for their hard work and dedication for making this event successful. I really look forward to produce a meaningful outcome of this symposium. I want to encourage all the delegates to participate on the discussion session in the afternoon and provide your valuable suggestions and comments. With these few words, I'd like to welcome all of you and allow me to wish you for fruitful discussion to design agriculture and forestry education policy in Nepal. I wish the success of the conference. Thank you all for your time. <laughs> to give us some kind of space regarding this workshop. Um. <coughs> Thank you, Professor. I remember my first visit to Nepal. I was talking to um, one of the experts at USAID, Mr. Navin Hada. And one of the things he challenged me with is he said, Bola, one thing we need here is more integration of our research. I had my first discussion with the Vice Chancellor. And it was a Skype call, and he was telling me that AFU is a land-grant institution. And he, I asked him to describe what he meant, and he did. And I said that our understanding of land-grant is different. And since then, we I had the opportunity to meet him, and we've had very many fruitful discussions, which culminated in my visiting AFU um, last year. We are very privileged at the University of Florida to have the Innovation Lab for Livestock Systems, which is funded by USDA under the US government's Feed the Future initiative, which was started in, after the 2009 global food crisis to combat world poverty, malnutrition, and more recently, the effort focus has been on building resilience. This, uh, our initiative in the Livestock Lab, our vision is to try and help to sustainably intensify livestock production to meet the very targets that 
the Vice Chancellor was talking about, to try and help to reduce the levels of stunting and undernutrition here in Nepal and in our eight other countries. I remember being very warmly welcomed by Dr. Haramba, uh, Dr. Premi, Dr. Pandey, and, and many others during our visits to Nepal. And I'm very grateful for the warm welcome and support that we have had. It is a great honor for me to be here today to participate in this discussion on agriculture and forestry policy um, in Nepal. I look forward to a, a very stimulating discussion that will not just end today, but that will sow the seeds of change, useful and fruitful change, that will lead to greater agricultural and forestry productivity, that will feed Nepal, and will also serve as a catalyst that will allow Nepal to exploit the great markets that are in its neighboring countries. So once more I say good morning to everybody, and I look forward to a very useful time of deliberations today. Thank you. This project is going on in collaboration with the NAC and then some other NGO. Uh, but I will consider the Forest University is also in touch with the capacity building project. Dr. William Rebecca, uh, Rebecca William, she is here today also and she will participate. Uh, in fact, for last one year, we've been working with the several other capacity building training and other things. So that's the kind of collaboration with the University of Florida also. Thank you very much for your continued support. And then we hope that in the future, we will be able to do a lot of better things with respect to collaboration and improving the research funding. Uh, thank you, sir. Ma, Mantanda Lai, Agar Parang Sahi, Karipari Amro, Yo, Autochari, Inagarasan Karkam, Ami, Antitras Hom. Isi Sandra Ma, Atma, Sara Garbi, Dish Sabda, Rakhi Dino Ma, Ma, Vishnu Vidyalaya Amdan Ayurka Sada Si Sachit, Pradhyabha Dr. Devraj Padikari Jula Amdan ये तब हम बहुत तो पूरा समय में तबाह लियो कार्य के बाहर जाने वाले बात सा यार लथास में क्यों आये इतना इस तरीके से आये प्रश्न बाय बस काम कर रहे बस ना सूर्य का तो समय रिपोर्ट भुजावनी बनने थी और तरह आज हम सुन रहे थे कि वो अलग एक्सटेंशन उनसे की जो स्पष्ट की नहीं तो इसमें ब्याप क्या इशारा वाला डिपार्टमेंट लोगों का पहुंच की बंदी हमें आशा रहेगा सो र तीस के लागे बने यो आज एक जून ढेला था एक दो में बहुत तो पूरा मैंने कुछ मजे वो अक्सर लाई र यह आज जो पेपर पेजेंटर पेजेंटर में नाम सुने एक दो में बहुत तो पूरा व्यक्तित्व रूपन्सा अनुभवी शिक्षा भी जरूरन्सा व मुझे और मत लिए मैं तीन चार दिन तक ना चाहूँ चुकी हूँ मैं यहाँ वो उच्च शिक्षा को बारे में उच्च शिक्षा को बारे में विभिन्न चरण में विभिन्न इशारा पर चावल बन रहा है सब विश्व विद्यालय अपना लाएगा 50 परसेंट पूरा कर 50 परसेंट लाएगा सब अमित इस पांच सौ सात तीन दिन लगातार पस्ती अब कुत्ता जाने तो विश्व विद्यालय उच्च शिक्षा को दिशा निर्देश क्यों होता होगा तो मंगल पूरा से मौत तो पूरा सोचने में बात सर इसमें हम लोग गंगा लाल लाइफ साथ में आम बात है वहाँ पर उन्हें जो हम लोग पूर्व विश्व विद्यालय का पाइसन से अच्छा लगता है मार्च में आम बात है आज हम लोग नाम तो सुनें उच्च शिक्षा वाली विषय थी मतलब दस्तावेज़ ये लोग पाल लोगों को पसंद वाली पढ़ाने को पसंद किसान इंडियन स्कूल में पसंद बनने की शादी तो हम लोग पंडित जन में आए हो सा तो क्यों करा अभी डॉक्यूमेंट को लूटा शिक्षा मतलब लोग बुझाने से तो कॉलेज जिला में बुझाने से विभिन्न लोग शायद बढ़ते आए से सातों लोग प्रदेश में सातों लोग विश्व विद्यालय एकार लोग विश्व विद्यालय वाले चली रही का सम अब तीस पच्ची अब स्थानीय लेवल में भी विश्व विद्यालय चलाने बनी पुराने बनी 
विज्ञान और प्रविधि का विषय में बड़ी हम ध्यान जान पर्व जो लगे रो खो नीति लियादीन कि एकदम तल प्रभाव पड़ोस पदाधिकारी शिक्षक कर्मचारी विद्यार्थी जिम्मेवार बनाओस् मूंद तीस घंटा को क्लास सात घंटा में सकता अरे लैब में कहीं फैसिलिटी छेन अरे ये हिसाब से हम कस शिक्षा प्रणाली में अगड़ी लान सकते कुछ विश्वविद्यालय में बाहर पंद्रह सौ शिक्षक विश्वविद्यालय आप स्वीकृति दिए बाहर पढ़ा जाओ स्वीकृति दी मेन मेन जो साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी में पूरा आगे अर विषय में शिक्षक छेन भाई कुछ आई रह दरबंदी में भैर ये कुछ कसरी गवर्न करने भाई कुछ शायद यह नृत्य ने भी भाला अब अनुसंधान में आधारित शिक्षा का व्यापक बनाने पे भाई कुछ हम भाई रह सब तब कार्य बन तो पैसा कुछ भी आई रह अब यह अनुसंधान कुशल कक्षा सुन विद्यासम पुराने हो क्या भैर हम अनुसंधान कक्षा कक्षा सब अनुसंधान में लिंग नईकन आपने लगी मत अनुसंधान कर कक्षा कक्षा में लाने खाने निर्ति लिया पठन पाठन परीक्षा कैलेंडर लैब सुधार करने इसको नीति ने कहीं खोल दिओस् बोल ते हिसाब पर एक्शन प्लान बना विश्वविद्यालय जान सकते तो आज ये विश्वविद्यालय बने कार्यक्रम अरुण पॉलिसी अरु विश्वविद्यालय अथवा राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति में भी गाइड कर सकोस् एफिलेशन को ठूल समस्या सबला इसलिए खत्म पारने खत्म पारने कसरी खत्म पारने भ तब नगर तर तब बदनाम भैया एप्लीसन कर कैंपस समृद्ध बनाऊ भोलि आप चला न सकते विषय राज्य ने खर्च कर न सकने खाले विषय ठूला ठूला इन्वेस्टमेंट कर आने के हे विचार करूं तर सदैं पछाड़ी तो गए हम हो गति ये एट विश्वविद्यालय को मैं समस्या भाषा में सब विश्वविद्यालय को समस्या भैर इस कसर लिया जाने हो बरू अब डीम यूनिवर्सिटी कंसेप्ट राम लगता मैं हिसाब से नन एफिलेटिंग यूनिवर्सिटी भोलि को स्थिति में तस्त पर्यटन तो हिसाब से नहीं जान पर्व ये कुछ एफिलेशन का कुछ नीति भि अलग पार्दे विश्वविद्यालय आपको स्वायत्त संस्था इस प्रवेश करने तो धीरे मिलते हैं तथापि यह जो कि समस्या देखि कि साना तीन कुरा विश्वविद्यालय वास्तविक आपको जो पड़ने उस ध्यान दिन सक आचार्य पदाधिकारीजी तो गंभीर भर विचार कर बाहर जाने विज्ञान में फर्का पे हमारा तीस देखि पचास प्रतिशत विद्यार्थी बाहर जान गर्व करने कि बाहर गए भिता लिया सके गर्व कर तो खाले नीति आओस् परिवर्तन करो लगे ट्रांसफर कर सके अब मत खास में यह कृषि संबंधी विज्ञ हो तर मैं देखे भैग कुछ ये दुई वर्ष में यहाँ से सीयर कर विश्वविद्यालय के प्राध्यापक हूँ हिजो को दिन में व्यवस्थापन को डीम पर थी तो बेला में मैं भी एट एप्लीकेशन खोले थे मैं नदीकर नदी दिन ये प्रेसर आए ये प्रेसर आगे मेरे लिए काम होने भर कोई मैं चार वा नया प्रोग्राम कर हम प्राध्यापक रिसर्च रिशिंग करने वातावरण मिलाई दूँ लैब सुदृढ़ीकरण कर इसमें बड़ी ध्यान दूँ विश्वविद्यालय अनुदान आयोग तरफ मैं बोलने पता ये कुछ भैर तर एक किसिम को नीति आओस् जिससे देश को कृषि बन को जो कृषि बन ने जो दिन पड़ने कुछ देश को लगी हो नीति हम अपेक्षा कर रहा नीति भोलि उच्च शिक्षा के नीतिसंग समित कर इंटिग्रेट कर 
मैत्री भन्दै बिदावै धन्यवाद विश्वविद्यालयन्दन आएको सदस्य सचिवज्यू बाट विषयवस्तुको सन्दर्भमा जो के दिनु भयो पट्टे दिनु भयो वर्कसप सम्पूर्ण पनि यसले चाहिँ धेरै ठुलो महत्व राख्छ यो उनीहरु सरकारको लागि हामी मन्त्रीपछि चाहिँ टुङ्ग्याउँछौ तर यो ब्रेक मात्रै हुन्छ जब हामी चेयर लिएर जान्छौ त्यही बेला पनि स्टुडेन्ट भाइ सक्सेसन पनि गर्छौ र त्यो चाहिँ इमिडिएटली नै हामी यही ठाउँमा आउँछौ र हाम्रो अरु टेक्निकल सेसनलाई चाहिँ सुरु गर्छौ मैले यति बेला निवेदन गर्न चाहे तपाईँले छोडिसक्यो यो बोल्दा पनि हामीले ख्याल गर्नुपर्ने छ यसै सन्दर्भमा हाम्रो सपोर्ट कलिग पनि हुनुहुन्छ र उहाँ अहिले यस सन्दर्भमा आएर आफ्ना भाइहरूलाई सहयोग गरेर हामी हाम्रो यो सफल कार्यक्रमलाई करिब करिब अन्त्यमा लैजान सहयोग गर्नुमा अनुरोध गर्छ सर्वप्रथम म आफू हुर्केको ठाउँ र मैले पनि शिक्षा आर्जन गरी लामो समय झन्डै एक दशक भन्दा बढी लामो समय पदार्पण गरेको ठाउँमा आज मेरा आदरणीय गुरुहरूले मलाई एउटा भूमिकाको रूपमा यहाँ आमन्त्रण गर्नुभयो म कार्यक्रमको बिचबाटै हुर्किएर यहाँ आएको हुँ र यसप्रति म वास्तवमा अत्यन्त यहाँहरूप्रति गौरवान्वित चाहन्छु र यहाँलाई सम्मान गर्न चाहन्छु र धन्यवाद प्रकट गर्न चाहन्छु सर्वप्रथम अहिलेको जुन यो सन्दर्भमा पन्ध्रौ आन्तराष्ट्रिय जुन चाहिँ यो कार्यक्रम जुन चाहिँ राष्ट्रिय रूपमा कृषिको कार्यक्रम पनि पन्ध्रौ आयोजना बन्न लागिरहेको सन्दर्भमा जुन यो कार्यक्रम हुन गइरहेको छ र सिँगै अहिलेको वर्तमान सरकारले कृषिमा दगन उत्पादन गर्ने देशमा आफ्नो विभिन्न बाली वस्तुको आत्मनिर्भरतातर्फ उन्मुख हुने र खास गरी जति पनि ट्रेड डेफिसिट छ यो ट्रेड डेफिसिटलाई नेरो डाउन गर्ने खास गरी कृषिलाई परम्परागत कृषि प्रणालीबाट आधुनिक कृषि प्रणालीमा लगी यसलाई व्यवसायीकरण औद्योगिकरण यान्त्रिकरणका माध्यमबाट यसलाई परिष्कृत रूपमा लैजाने भन्ने जुन एउटा नीति अगाडि सारेको छ यस सन्दर्भमा यो यति महत्त्वपूर्ण कार्यक्रम मलाई लागिरहेको छ कि यसले आगामी एउटा दिशा निर्देश गर्नेतर्फ यो कार्यक्रमको महत्त्वपूर्ण भूमिका हुनेछ भन्ने कुराहरू मैले बुझेको छु तसर्थ मैले हाम्रो अन्य रेगुलर कार्यक्रमको साथ साथै यो कार्यक्रम पनि खास गरी मानिस स्वास्थ्य हुनको लागि यु आर व्हाट व्हाट यू इट भन्छ वास्तवमा हामीले जे खान्छौँ त्यही गरेर हाम्रो शरीर भनेको किनभन्दा खानाबाट शरीर धेरै बिग्रन्द रहेछ र मन्त्रालय देश को कृषिको सम्पूर्ण कार्यक्रम कसरी बन्छ र कसरी बिग्रन्छ भन्ने कुरा मलाई लाग्छ कृषि र वन विश्वविद्यालयमा प्रदापन गर्ने विषयसँग सम्बन्धित छ कृषिसँग जति पनि जनसक जनशक्ति उत्पादन गर्ने इन्स्टिट्युसनहरूसँग यसको सम्बन्धित छ त्यसले गर्दा देशै रोगी हुने कि नहुने कृषि मन्त्रालयले कस्तो किसिमको उपलब्धि हासिल गर्ने भन्ने कुरा मलाई के लाग्छ भने नारायणी नदी सफा गर्नु छ भने यहाँ नारायणगढको पुल मुनि बसेर होइन त्यो भोटे कोसी र माथि त्रिशुली नुवाकोट रसुवातिर सफा गर्नुपर्छ भन्ने मलाई लाग्छ त्यही कुराको महत्त्वलाई मैले बुझेर यो कार्यक्रमको विषयबाट म पोखरादेखि विराटनगर जाने सन्दर्भमा यहाँ आएको थिएँ र मैले सरको धेरै कुरा यहाँ राख्नु भन्दा नेपाल सरकारले कस्तो किसिमको अहिले नीतिहरू अख्तियार गरेको छ कस्तो किसिमको सोच अगाडि बढाएको छ हालसम्मका हाम्रा नीति रणनीति कार्यनीतिहरू हाम्रा निर्देशिकाहरू कसरी अगाडि बढे भन्ने कुरामा कहाँ हाम्रो चाहिँ कृषि र वन विश्वविद्यालयसँग पठन पाठनलाई जोड्न सकिन्छ भन्ने कुरामा मैले पनि केही फिडब्याक दिएँ र सरुको पनि सुनौँ आगामी हामीलाई पनि त्यो पन्ध्रौँ आयोजना तयारी गरिरहेको सन्दर्भमा हामीलाई मार्गदर्शन हुन्छ भन्ने अनुरूप मैले यो कार्यक्रमको महत्त्वलाई स्वीकार राखेको हुँ र अहिले हामीले यदि विगतमा भएको कृषिको स्थितिलाई हेऱ्यौँ भने यहाँ पत्रकार साथीहरू पनि हुनुहुन्छ म के आग्रह गर्न चाहन्छु भने कम्तीमा नेपाल सरकारले कृषि मन्त्रालयले जुन चाहिँ सर सरकार चलाउने र सत्ता चलाउने दुईटा कुरा हुन्छ सरकार पोलिटिकल पार्टीले चलाउनु हुन्छ सत्ता भनेको कर्मचारीले चलाउने हो यसको बिचको तालमेलको स्थिति हेर्दा अहिले मन्त्रालयले खास गरी सत्ता चलाउने हामीले के गरिरहेका छौँ कृषिमा भन्दा हिजोको कृषिलाई आज माथि लैजाने भन्ने अनुरूप हाम्रो दुई हजार एकसट्ठीको कृषि नीति एग्रिकल्चर पोलिसी जुन आयो त्यसको फ्रेमवर्क बनाएर हामीले केही कार्यक्रमहरू गऱ्यौँ खास गरी एग्रिकल्चर पोलिसी वाज बेसिकल्ली इन्भेस्टेजिङ एट द टाइम फर द ग्रोथ लेट अप्सनबाट गएको थियो विथ द इम्प्याक्ट अफ ग्रिन रेभोल्युसनको हिसाबले
कस्तो परिणाम निकाल चाहिए रामपुर था नुने अभी कस्तो रिसर्च कर भाई कुछ रामपुर को प्लट निकालने ठा नुने विद्यार्थी ठा नुने रिसर्च ठा नु हम तीनवटा इंस्टिट्यूशन बाहर एलग जस्तु भाई थी तर अ कृषि रन विश्वविद्यालय जब आयो तेरफ्यू आई सके सर व्यक्तिगत रूप में हो बाहर को विषयगत रूप में इस हम सब जान पिसाब से हो रहा मैं लग हम पोलिशी अनुसार हमने अलग ग्राइड करना हो गौरव प्रसाद भू अ कृषि तथा जो हम पशुपन से विस मंत्रालय ने यहाँ हम पूर्व सचिव जीव भी हमी अगड़ी देखी के कार्यक्रम देखी के हम कृषि विवास रणनीति में हमी दक्ष जनशक्ति बिना अब हलो रोके न कृषि को व्यवसाय कर सकता न दला चढ़ अमेरिका पुग्न सकता अमेरिका पुग्न भी सकिं तस्त हिसाब से हमें अब को प्रविधि सब जोड़ना को लगी उन्नत किसिम को एकदम कैपिटल पावर बनाएसम हमी उत्पादन लृद्धि कर सकिन भाई कुछ बुझे एडिस में हमी पर्याप्त मात्रा में एयरफ्यू रिस्टर तैं जाने अगे हम विश्वविद्यालय अनुदान आयोग के सर भो कि कृषि शिक्षा खास कर रामपुर को फ्रेंड्स बात हमारे विद्यार्थी बाहर को वास्तविकता के हो ते जोड़ने कसरी भय में हमें इंटर्न को व्यवस्था होता तैं जहाँ जहाँ नेपाल का अनुसंधान फार्मर हो जहाँ जहाँ नेपाल सरकार ने कृषि के कार्यक्रम तैं हम इंटर्न एम एस सी पीएससी पीएचडी करने विद्यार्थी लू पर्च भू मैं अभी यहाँ लुशी को सेयर करना चाहूँ झंडे चार सौ चौवालीस जना अगर मितिसम ये जना ने बीएससी एम एससी में सरकार ने अभी सुपर जोन जोन को कंसेप्ट हम कार्यक्रम अगड़ी बढ़ाई रोक्रम में समाहित भैस अं मैडम सर हमीसंग समन्वय कर हफ्ता फिर हमें एवं अलग बृहत रूप में सीग्नेचर करने छलफल करने आगामी कसरी विद्यार्थी बड़ी भाग बड़ी इन्वल्व कराने का कार्यक्रम कर रो आर्थिक वर्ष में हम धेरा धे विद्यार्थी हमें तैं सहित करते मोडल होगा रिएस के संगे ईस्टर्न ट्रेनिंग लैबोरेटरी एंड कैपेसिटीज अफ द यूनिवर्सिटी स्टूडेंट्स एंड यूनिवर्सिटी फिजिकल फैसिलिटीज भाई हिसाब से तो एक्टिविटी नहीं राखे अभी तो राखे होना कार्यक्रम हम इस लैजान सकता क्योंकि नाक में फैसिलिटी तो फैसिलिटी तैंकर रिसर्च हम विद्यार्थी सेयर करने किसिम को फिले तैं विद्यार्थी रिसर्च भी करना पाँच तैं उ रिसर्च में आपूल थेसिश बनाने काम भी कर सकते तो ढंग ने हम विश्वविद्यालय के विद्यार्थी लान भी सकता रही विश्वविद्यालय अंदन आयोग के सर ने भन्न पाते नेता एक ताकत हान निर्यात करने अवस्था में थी आज भाई विश्वास कर सकते अवस्था में धेरे पटना साथी लेख अरुरा कृषि में खास ये अरब अरब के आयात उत्ती अरब के आयात भूमि देखिश मैं क्या हम तीन लगुतावाद रेती हिंदा बोध भी कृषि में गए नगर को लाई संपूर्ण कृषि संग आरोप संपूर्ण विज्ञान के आग्रह कर चाहूँ स्पष्ट यही बाटो खनो कष्ट देखि दस किलोमीटर बाटो थे तेरे चिन्ह बना माला लगा इंजीनियर हो अलग बिजुली बांधे धल्ल बल्ल तैंने चाहिए सवासी पाँच तेरे चाहिए तब को उद्योग को कुछ घर बनाई दौ सब चीज भौतिक सुविधा देखिज तर आज एक पाल कर आज खाओ भोलि खाओ तो खाई सको आगे खाई आती कृषि ने करेन भाई जी करेन तो मोहाल नेपाल सरकार ने स्वीकार तर हिजो एक करोड़ जनसंख्या होता रही तेज को तीन बिना तीन करोड़ होता कोई मं भोक मांग अफ्रिका जो भाषा छाइन सब मानी जाना रात खाला हेते तब को हे तब हम आहार बिहार अगर बिहार उठो ब्रेकफास्ट दिवसो लंच आफ्टरनून लंच बेलुकी डिनर अलग मटन चाउमिन चिकन दुनिया भर हम अभी तरकारी को हेन स्थिति ने तरकारी आमो प्याज हाफ पर्सेंटेज मतलब नियोजित फिफ्टी पर्सेंट बाहे अरुण तरकारी में तरकारी कि खाने ठावे सहर बजार में थे मैं पहाड़ के मैं हाई स्कूल पढ़ा पूरा सुबह को तरकारी भात खाए सुबह जैसे भैया थे अभी अगर तब हमें हरियो तरकारी खाने और पहाड़ के ठाव आई मेरे शहर बजार में जी तरकारी को आपत्ति मेरे नाइन्टी पर्सेंट भाग बड़ी तरकारी नेपाली उत्पादन बात दूध बाटा मैं दुई वर्ष आगे पशुपंशी सचिव होता 
नेपाल सरकार को कृषि विकास रणनीति भन्ना हमी चाहे धीरे कृषि विश्वविद्यालय तीसरे वन विश्वविद्यालय के नीति धीरे पर्व हमें भिन्न रूप में हेन सक मार अथवा इनलाइन कर एलाइन कर हमें लान पर्ने आवश्यकता अब हमें हम कस्ट किसम ने हमी सरकार ने इंडिशेस प्राप्ति करने विषय में हम कसरी जाने हम प्रोडक्शन कसरी जान सकता निकालने भाई विषय में मैं लगे एक दुटा क्या के सब भाई पैले तो हम चाहिए नीति ने प्रोग्राम गाइड कर प्रोग्राम ने एक्टिविटी गाइड कर हमें डे टू डे एक्टिविटी करने गाइड कर अब हम करिकुलम कस्ट हो पर्यटन करिकुलम इंप्रुवमेंट कर करिकुलम इंप्रुवमेंट कर हम इंडस्ट्री सेक्टर का प्राइवेट सेक्टर का हेम देखो हम मुद्रा बाई जैसे थुप्रे प्राइवेट सेक्टर का साथी बिना अथवा वहाँ को चाहना छे हम जे राम पढ़ाते बाहर हम थुप्रे पड़क प्रविधि आँ हम पची पी वहाँ अगर तेस पच्चीस हमें बीव भी नया आयो तो फार्मा में वाइडर एक्सपेन्स भो दर्ता करूँ विषादी जैविक विषादी नया आयो मल आयो तो पति दर्ता करूँ टेक्नोलॉजी नया आयो तो दर्ता करें उन्हीं लगे बिहार अने हमी अनुभव नहीं कोई छोरा छोरी ने नगर बाबा ने बिहार करते जो सरकार ने गए तेल रजिस्टर कर दून पे लगे नया जात आयो ये नया जात दर्ता कर दून पे हतार हतार कर हरिहर भवन में मंत्रालय में मिटिंग कर अभी रजिस्टर कर दून पर्ने के कारण मैं के अरिकुलम बना हम नीति बना मन लगे आज को अलग हम प्रिमिनरी छलफल होगा यो राउंड अफ छलफल में धेरे स्टेप हो कल बनाने पर्स जो मैं लगे सरकार में काम करने अभी नाक में काम करने प्राइवेट सेक्टर के इंडस्ट्रियलिस्ट हो हम चाहिए कमिशन स्टेक होल्डर हमें राखे हमी बनाये विश्वविद्यालय ने अब कस्त गति मिले कस्त कार्यक्रम तय करने कसरी हम अगड़ी बढ़ने भाई कुरा सकता रो कुरो फंडिंग जो चाहिए इंसेंट फंडिंग असाध्य लो रेट में फंडिंग यहाँ छोटे जो लैबर को स्थिति यहाँ देखने सरकार ने इक्विपमेंट कि आईतवार हाल ही छेन कोरिडोर में कोठा में ये तत्व छे अमपुर में हम आदरणीय जो यहाँ में देखो हम प्रोफेसर चंद्रमा सर लगात हम का आदरणीय धेरे काम लैब अभी इक्विपमेंट फैसिलिटी ते खोजा खोजते विद्यार्थी को रिसर्च कर अब को नीति के होने पे हम खास करी ये फेन्स में सर्टे टाइम पढ़ाई होने तो देखिए बाहे निर्ली सिक्सटी सिक्सटी फाइव पर्सेंट तैं पढ़ी सके अरु काम इंडस्ट्री संग गमेंट को अन्न निकाय संग हमें चाहे लिंक कर हम विद्यार्थी रिसर्च कराने मोर प्क्टिकल ओरिएटेड बनाने हिसाब से लू पर्च रंटिन्सली चाहिए मथिपटी लविंग करने सिलसिला में फंडिंग को लगी इस जान पर्च भूरा राख चाहूँ रिशी तथा पशुपंच विवास मंत्रालय के तरफ बट हम सदा वास्तव में कृषि वन विश्वविद्यालय नेशन को एटा मत यूनिवर्सिटी हो टीम अंतर्गत आएस ठीक है उसके मेनपावर प्रदर्शन तर यह चाहिए गवर्नमेंट को वन अफ द यूनिवर्सिटीज हो तेजाखे इसको लगी हमें चाहिए मंत्रालय उच्च प्राथमिकता दिए कार्यक्रम अगर बढ़ाने पर्च इसमें सर लगन को लगी कहीं बड़ी आग्रह करना चाहूँ एवटा मात्र क्या यहाँ टीम यूनिवर्सिटी को पुरा भी आगे मैं सर जिज्ञासा लगन सकता भारत बड़ के विज्ञान हम अब मंत्रालय में आए ये पूरा अलग छिपी सकते हमी धेरे लेवलसम हम छोड़ जाने अगड़ी बढ़ने स्थिति में छो रहा प्रश्न क्या के राख चाहिए पूरा झंडे पंद्रह वर्ष सोलह वर्ष अगड़ी देखिए अगड़ी बढ़ने कुछ हो इसमें कृषि तथा पशुपंच विवास मंत्रालय के तरफ बार सरकार को धारणा के होने अगले हमें यहाँ जो पूरा विद्यार्थी कल कर इंट्रांस कराएर जात्रा कर पचास सौजना भरना करने ये हमी खरीद नार्क को रिसर्च फैसिलिटी गवर्नमेंट को रिसर्च लाइब्रेरी केवल पीएचडी रोस्ट डॉक लेवल को अलग मेन पावर लाइन खास करी नार्क का कम केन्द्र में तो होने सकने फैसिलिटी लाइन हम टैप करने हिसाब से नार्क में यह करने के अगर बढ़ाए इसको अर्थ के इसलिए कुछ अगर वर्तमान विश्वविद्यालय प्रतिस्पर्धा 
On the contrary, when the nature, mother nature is unkind, it often leads to misfortune due to fraud, etc. To the rich, agriculture has been the principal source of prosperity, most, of, of, most often associated with utter exploitation of the tiller. Case in hand is Nepal. Nepal's agrarian structure could be viewed as an important factor in rural poverty. Land distribution in Nepal is highly skewed. Most of the agricultural land is owned by few, very few landholders, and a vast farm population owns only a small portion of land. The later group generally has a land size which is less than half a hectare per household, a household of seven persons. Besides, land is severely fragmented. This has resulted into proletarianization of sizable sections of the rural population and widespread share tenancy that inhibit transition to a more progressive agriculture. They even block the benefits to the rural poor of whatever little increase in farm production occurs in such a social economic milieu. Literature accounts dating back to nearly 100 years that show that modernization in agriculture was first attempted in Nepal by sending few Nepali students to India to study modern agricultural science. During the same time, an agriculture office, Krishi Adda, was opened in today's Charkhal Adda, Delhi Bazaar. Currently, Nepal is running its 14th periodic plan. Drastic political changes have occurred. Constitutionally, Nepal is now a federal democratic republic and is organized into seven provinces, 77 districts, and 753 local entities. District level agriculture offices have been closed and agriculture development activities have been handed over to the local entities. However, farmers report that past service delivery activities have stopped with no functional alternative. The restructuring is like a pendulum as great degree of resistance appears among the civil servants who are reluctant to serve the positions at the local level. Agricultural education which was previously within the government system, was brought under the university system during the 1970s. It has produced numerous graduates who serve the nation, but performance of agriculture sector has not improved. At present, agricultural extension, research, and education are conducted by three separate organizations, which do not have any functional linkages. In this paper, I will very briefly focus on agriculture education. Uh, there is a report that agricultural education first began in 1952 with the establishment of an agriculture training center in Singhadarwar under the point four program of PL4 they said, of UCID to train mid-level agricultural technicians. Later in 1957, the Department of Agriculture established a school of agriculture, PC school, to train junior technical assistants. In the year 1968, this school got upgrade, upgraded to the College of Agriculture in Jagadamba Krishi Bhavan, Pulchok, Dalitpur. This building was donated to the government by Jagadamba Maharani to run a College of Agriculture and later a university. The college began to train junior technicians. This was a two years technical program known as Intermediate in Agricultural Science. With the introduction of a new education system in the country, this college was given the status of the Institute of Agriculture and Animal Science and was brought under the Trimbhuvan University system in Kathmandu in 1972. It was then increasingly realized that an institute which teaches agriculture would be more suitable in a rural setting than in the heart of the city. At this time, a panchayat training center was operating in Rampur Chitong, which was within the Ministry of Local Development. This center and Jagadamba Krishi Bhavan were exchanged. The institute was relocated from Kathmandu to Rampur, Chitwan in 1974. This institute began its undergraduate program in agriculture in the year 1977. In 1987, the institute added a bachelor's program in animal science, which was later phased out, and in 1993, the bachelor's of veterinary science and animal husbandry was introduced, the IAS, together with its branch campuses, has been instrumental in producing trained manpower in agriculture in Nepal. 
the government of Nepal enacted a bill on June 17, 2010, TFU Act 2010, which established the Agriculture and Forestry University in Chiton, Nepal. It aims at producing highly skilled human resources required to promote quality education, research and development in agriculture, livestock, veterinary science, forest fisheries, forestry and other disciplines. This would help to meet the national priorities and policies, for example, as envisaged in the ADS plan. By producing highly skilled human resources, generating appropriate technology, and launching development programs, this would further lead to an all-round development of agriculture, which would help raise the socio-economic conditions of the rural poor through quality teaching, research, and extension in agriculture, livestock, and forestry. According to this act, the constituent campuses of Triwar University, the agriculture campus in Rampur, the forestry campus Institute of Forestry in Yatamara, together with the dean's office at IAS Rampur, were merged and the Agriculture and Forestry University was created in Rampur Chiton. The AFU is a state-funded first technical university in Nepal with three functions of teaching, research and extension as mandated in the act. For two years, the university was simply on papers but with a huge mobilization of local people and agitation, the government appointed a vice chancellor and after a few months added two more university authorities. In the year 2012, it took almost a year to put some flesh on the skeleton with organizational structure in shape and curriculums approved. Now, the AFU runs as a full-fledged university with multiple programs beginning from bachelor's to PhD levels of education. It has developed its strategic plan and also operational plan. This, however, should not lead anyone to believe that all problems are solved. The problems. There are internal as well as external problems related to the university. At this moment, I would like to uh, ask the uh, delegates that uh, these are all my personal uh, feelings based on my 50 years of uh, active academic life. 11 years in the government and, and almost 40 years in different universities, mostly in Trivial University, then AFU and Kathmandu University. I had been uh, visiting <coughs> a senior researcher in Cornell University and also in Michigan State University. So based on all these things, I have been writing these problems uh, related to this university uh, right now in Nepal. Mostly teaching of agriculture has not been adequately linked with practical activities. Theories with no or minimal practical do not make much sense in technical education. Often the university authorities and teachers get distracted and are not adequately available during the office hours. Lack of communication and or miscommunication among various stakeholders have always retarded the growth of the university in its path to prosper. Students, groups compete for strikes and closures. Faculties misuse the students and thus weaken their competency. Maintaining the law and order is a problem. Those who are involved in destroying the university property with fire and stone throwing are not punished. Instead, the university bears all medical bills to the agitators. Property transport due to AFU has become like a once upon a time story. It has been almost six years that the case is pending in the Supreme Court. The university is severely infected with political activities. Politics should have played a positive role for the advancement of the university. But at AFU, it is the reverse. Constituent campuses have been opened with no proper planning. Administrators, faculties and staff do not make a homogeneous group. Another problem. Together, uh, to get towards achieving the goal of the university, but each group is interested in extracting the benefits for its own group as much as possible. This makes the university blocked for many months in a year and the quality of education thus further gets deteriorated. There are other types of problems too. Nepal is organizing fast and with the organization, road networks expand, leading to massive increase in the number of vehicles. Roads compete for land. There is a statistics which mentions that a fleet of 20 cars uses at least 0.4 hectare of land. With this, the industries will demand more and more water, which will compete for irrigation water. Moreover, one will group in number. 
with improvement in income, it would change the food habit. But the government officials and others who influence the government do not have even a faint type of natural resources and right to food and agriculture in line with public interest. Nepal is looking for a bright future and, of course, enhanced property, prosperity. However, there are challenges as agriculture advances. Questions arise related to environmental degradation, sustainability, ethical and social concerns surrounding the use of biotechnology. Established by the Morrill Act and designed into the law by President Abraham Lincoln in 1862, the land grant system is still relevant today. This continued relevance is largely due to the time-tested tripartite mission of these universities, teaching, research, and public service. The U.S. government recently celebrated its 150th anniversary of the founding of land grant university model. It's 156 right now. And colleges. Based on the success of the system, the U.S. government during the 1960s asked for 10 years, India got its young agricultural scientists trained, such as G.V. Pantanagar University of Agriculture and Technology, first country in the 1980s. On the contrary, they advised that universities should do a lot of things. Now, I think that yet in Nepal, universities have no significant mandated oldest institution of higher learning. It has separate research centers, such as these are some of the potentialities that one could do. But if again we analyze the budget for these uh, years, we find that uh, this year, uh, this, this has been taken from the economic survey and program budget also of this year running year. Uh, the out of the total outlay, uh, this year's budget is 6.05%. This is on agriculture, forestry, fishing, and hunting. But if agriculture is excluded, then the budget allocation for agriculture only is 2%, not 6%, but 2%. But there is a deep service by the government also that agriculture has been a top priority uh, sector in Nepal, but it's not, uh, based on the budgetary allocation. So this again means that there should be more budget. That is, about the Gyaju Ministry also, I have written that Gyaju Ministry should be Ministry of Agriculture, not Ministry of Education for this university. Because in the university, mostly for higher education uh, uh, of the total outlay, budgetary outlay of, for this year, there is hardly 12% budget for allotted for higher education. And out of that 12%, higher education budget also, nearly 90% goes to the Tiruvan University, which is the largest organization in terms of manpower, faculty uh, and area coverage, you know. So the Ministry of uh, Finance gives this money to the Ministry of Education, which flows this budget to University Grant Commission. And it is University Grant Commission which allots budget to different universities, which deal with the higher, in the higher education. Now, out of that 10% or 10% or 12% of higher education, 90% is given by the University Grand Commission to the UN University, and remaining 10% is received by 9, 10 other universities, including AFU. So for the Education Ministry and also for UGC, this is not only the technical university, but this is a university which is a small university, which is like other universities. So we are in other categories, but if and if we look at the Ministry of Education also, there is both joint secretary and also two under secretaries and some one or two persons who look after all higher education. They are ill staffed and they cannot monitor uh, the higher education. So it's not a good place, that university. Had it been within the, within, uh, the agriculture ministry, then there will be like-minded persons. There are experts like us, like who, those who work in the university also. They know the whereabouts, you know, and so I I propose that this uh, uh, university should be within the University of Agriculture. Uh, manpower uh, try to assess manpower need also of this university, but it was very difficult. Uh, there were uh, no much data available, and based on the experiences of people, so this data should not be taken as authentic data. However, this is the best 
guesstimation. Uh, you see from the table that uh, until now, almost agriculture graduates, there, there are 14,000 plus agriculture graduates who have been produced till now uh, in Nepal. And out of those 14,000, the most conservative one, which I received from uh, various government sources informally by the people, they say only maybe 1,200, you know, which I didn't believe. 1,200 may be working in the government, which is not true. So in the government, as well as uh, uh, in NGOs and other places, also private entrepreneurs, there may be, uh, this is a guess, that 7,000 out of 14,000, 7,000 may be at work in Nepal, in agriculture. Veterinary Council has registered 1,108 persons. Uh, no, veterinary doctors in Nepal. Out of them, we guess that there will, there are 500 persons who are working in Nepal. Same is uh, true with the livestock. In livestock, there are more people who are working uh, based on the uh, uh, losses that we have in other sectors. And now, number of graduates produced is in agriculture nearly 550 agriculture graduates. There are new colleges also have opened. 550 per year, in veterinary 150 nearly per year. Livestock, uh, we don't produce livestock uh, graduates right now. So, if this uh, requirement, and then for five years requirement, you know, 20, nearly 20,000 graduates, few graduates in every municipality, suppose, and also 4,000 needed veterinary doctors, if we take the, this trend, present trend to the future also, it is going to take 86 years with this resources, 36 years to produce the required number of agriculture graduates in five years. In five years, will be requirement, we achieve the requirement in 20, uh, 36 years. In veterinary, it will take 27 years to produce the graduates which are needed in five years' time. You know. This indicates what sort of uh, uh, war footing uh, uh, requirements are there if really the government is serious. <laughs> now all those points and comments that our audiences would like to uh, provide on this paper, uh, you are kindly requested to have a note. So in a general session, we will provide time and opportunity to debate on them. Without delaying much time, now I would like to request Dr. Vishra Pradhikari to provide some comments on this paper. And your time allocation is 10 minutes, sir. The organizers of the seminar, Mr. Kudos, for selecting him for this paper, and this was his cup of tea. Being, uh, being involved for decades at various relevant capacities, the last one being the first vice chancellor of the first and only agriculture and forest university in the country. He has encompassed all relevant information and issues such as the important, importance and status of agriculture in Nepal, genesis and history of agriculture education from agriculture training center in 1952 up to enacting a bill on 20, June 17, 2010, April 2010, which established the agriculture first university in Chitur, Nepal. His paper also adequately includes the internal and external factors that are hampering functions of APO at par with international standard and producing corresponding high quality agriculture human resources dedicated to the country and the region. So I am going to skip whatever he has presented, the political interventions and other things. I would like to second what he has uh, presented. Uh, the more, most important factor is the political interventions, I think. And uh, others are all can we come to the modern line grand university teaching and learning? It is uh, twelve. Thirteenth slide, please. I 
I'll be presenting a little bit about modern life grant to university kids and learning. Though, though I, I didn't know that uh, you know, some of the authorities on this are here from Florida. Uh, but uh, since I was educated, uh, all my three degrees, yes, master's and PhD in this system, I wanted to share something and I have taken, it, uh, taken something from the literature also. The purpose of the land grant university is to offer an university for the people with the idea of the social role of the university. In, in other words, a university should have a broader purpose than simply existing to, to benefit a particular group, increasing knowledge for knowledge set or generating profits. That's not the, so the role of the Langan University. So it includes research and other scholarship, service, cooperative extensions, and community engagement. One most important thing is the uh, university's engagement with the community. Locally and, and uh, beyond. And campus life. The life of the modern land and university is shaped by the tradition of rich culture and that is handed down from one class of students to the next. It is also what entices alumni back for homecoming and invites, motivates them to send their children to their alma mater. This is the spirit of Rampure, or Rampure, like what we call about. Uh, we talk about and be proud of it. The public value of the modern land university, uh, modern land grant university, uh, is also very important. You should have public value. Public should love it. Public should respect it, and public should expect a lot of things from uh, this university. And uh, as Dr. Pakral has also uh, presented, university is uh, you know, one of the main part of the economic development of the country. It's not only only teaching and producing human resources in agriculture, but also to research and extension so that. It adds up, it becomes the main factor of the overall development of the country and prosperity of the country. First, we have capital human resources for that. The tripartite mission of the Langan University purpose is a conceptual model for fostering human capital in multiple contexts. Creativity includes creativity, innovation, and entrepreneurship. The role of the arts is not only agriculture, but related to arts. Wisdom and ethics are included there. The mission of the Land Grant University is to serve the broader community by disseminating this understanding to the citizens of the country. A contributor of the Land Grant University, promotion and tenure of the faculty and staff should be ensured. Role of institutional rankings should be there. Financial and fiscal accountability should be there. It all enhances the image of the university and people start building on it. Then uh, some of the comments that I have uh, I'll be presenting here are what uh, needs to be added a little bit on Dr. Douglas people, I think. He talks about all the genesis of the agriculture uh, education uh, development. But one thing is missing there that is uh, we used to have diploma in agriculture education. Uh, that, that was three years course and a lot of, uh, lot of students were there. Uh, so I think then during the 70s, Late 70s, we started to have conversion program to convert the BSc, uh, BSc in diploma, diploma in education to BSc agriculture. Uh, but after a few years, we will have to up. Maybe who are interested to convert themselves, I don't need to convert. Uh, students are not solely responsible for industry. Uh, his paper indicates that you know this is the only students who are uh, responsible for creating. A problem. The faculty and staff have also been observed to be equally involved in such negative activities. Uh, myself being uh, faculty for a, long, for a long time, so I have some, some of my own learning. Every education with research should focus on farmers' problems, <coughs> such as climate changes. Now we should talk, we should have some changes in the curriculum. Focus on climate change, yet best card drugs, including birds, monkeys, and elephants control. You will you will wonder if you go to some of the some of the districts for some elements of work or some other works. When we when we ask what is the real problem, they say, please control the monkeys. Whatever you give seeds, whatever new technology you bring, they all eat, eat it away. So you know, though it seems a little bit uh, absurd to talk about it, but they are the real problems that farmers are facing. Monkeys, the elephants also. Natural and natural disasters such as flooding, 
what are, what are the causes of flooding? You know, uh, how the students respond to how the scientists respond to drought, land erosion, landslides. So our children should focus a on, on it. It also includes promotion of nutritionally rich indigenous crops such as millets, kaguno, ragi, buckwheat, amaranth, beans, yams, tallow, etc. Because we talk about rice, we talk about wheat, we talk about maize and other things. But we forget very important indigenous crops that are very rich in nutrition and also they are dissipating from the scenario. So we should, we should be giving importance to it to our schools. Coordination among universities is needed. Government and private agriculture institutions have to be strong for effective delivery in agriculture development, including agriculture education. So here let me present shortly the short analysis of the agriculture university. Eastern establishment of agriculture and forest universities is strength. We have already established it as the only one. A strong theoretical background and scholarship opportunities. When I talk about a strong theoretical background, we talk that we have more theory and we have less practical and we should reverse it. But this is also a strong point because some of our graduates, many of our graduates who have gone out, they are doing very good in other countries. It's based on what theories we teach here. So with this is human resource issues that we have already included. Lack of agriculture value chain and system research is also here. Inadequate practical learning and experience training is also here. So we need practical things. Lack of collaboration between agriculture, education, research, and extension system as well. 